I have with me Ms. Kiran Prabhakar. She is the founding partner for PAV Law Offices. Uh, Kiranji, uh, can you please take us uh, through the market sentiment first? You know, we had seen a slump very recently, so has the market come out of it? See, as a lawyer, you know, uh, we do interact a lot with the industry. And I can only say this, that for in the last, say, about nine months, after the government has come in and there's been a bit of bit stability in the market, I have found that there have been a lot more transactions, uh, both at the level of investments and also at the slightly micro level. You know, you have more people buying, selling, because they keep coming to us for legal issues, you know, like doing a due diligence or generally, you know, finding out how the property or making the documents, you you know, so we basically, as lawyers, we help them in all that. So that is one part. Secondly, also, as I said, from the investment side, you know, we have had a, a more, uh, you know, interest from the large players, you know, people who are investment, uh, you know, uh, companies and all, where they are asking us for doing maybe uh, opinion on structuring or restructuring on how to get the FDI in. So those things are definitely on the increase in the last nine months, definitely, yes. Uh, so you will say the market sentiment is looking up and as legal advisors to you know some of the leading real estate companies in India I mean uh, what are your views on you know the Prime Minister's recent initiatives which is Amrut uh, housing for all and smart cities I mean are these going to give a fillip to the real estate sector as well see as long as they are uh, you know customized I, I always believe that you know every state or every region even when i was talking on the dais here you know we talked about environmental issues i think environmental issues are so specific to each state or every region so similarly if they are customized and as i had also said in my you know this uh, discussion which we had on the panel that you know there are different varieties of uh, smart cities you know they, they can be a green uh, field investment uh, green field sorry uh, smart city in where you know initiative or it can be retrofitting you know that's another kind where you know you add on to what is already there or it can be total replacement you know you just break down everything so depending on what is the requirement for a particular area i think unless smart cities recognize that because there is no definition of smart cities if you read what has come out in june 14 which was quite strange but it's true because it's so wide so we cannot really box it into one particular category so therefore, I think uh, it's a great initiative. And I also want to add one more thing, which I just read a uh, couple of days back. There's something called Transit Orient Development, which is also going to be, it's called TOD, which is also going to be part of the Smart City Initiative so that, you know, you can maximize uh, issues, you know, related to environment that would reduce emissions because people won't take out their cars. They can just walk down to wherever they are, you know, uh, living from to the place of work over, you know, this, uh, you have the metro, you have other ways of transport. So this Todd also is going to really help everything which is going towards the smart city. But for smart city, as I said, each model will have to be dependent on the area or where they are, you know, uh, in what, where they're customizing it. That's right. Uh, now, coming on to, you know, the uh, real estate investment trust. I mean, we recently saw Pakistan coming up with it. Uh, you know, they have beaten us to that and we've been just talking and deliberating over it. Uh, so what are your views on a real estate investment trust? See, REITs, you know, I tell you, I've been a lawyer now. It's been more than 20 years. I've been hearing REITs since, I think it is 2007. So it sounds very good. Uh, let me put it like that. But I think, I still feel the market is a little immature at this moment, the Indian market. And I'll tell you, there are fundamental issues which need to be addressed. And I uh, probably say this in most of the forums. First and foremost, we need to reorganize the title you know, depository. We don't have what is called a central database of title all over the country. You know, we have, it's very state specific. So what happens is the comfort, where, you know, suppose I want to go and buy a property in Bangalore, I want to invest there. So unless these fundamental issues are not raised, removed, plus I'll tell you another very important thing which keeps coming up. See, whenever somebody is acquiring land, and you know, uh, interestingly, the act has not uh, proposed whatever, bill has not uh, amended this part, there has to be a time limit from where you are taking the land. Suppose you are taking it from the agriculturist. The agriculturist cannot raise his head after 22 years and say, I want more compensation and stop the process 
of this acquisition. You know what has happened now in uh, Noida in 2011? What has happened? Basically, those agriculturists are saying we have not been paid enough. The whole process has got derailed. So what I'm saying is that unless these issues are addressed, fundamental legal issues, there has to be a law of limitation on these people's, you know, raising the issue of more compensation or whatever they need from the uh, regulator. That's one part. Secondly, a central data repository so that the title becomes absolutely clear. When these things really are addressed, I think REITs is not a distant dream. It can happen tomorrow. But the comfort has to come that what I'm investing in, is the land really clean? Is it really saleable? Those issues, I think, still remain in gray area. And uh, the telecom sector has it, uh, you know, in terms of TRAI as a regulator. So, uh, I mean, how far are we, uh, you know, from a regulator for the real estate industry as well? So we have this RERA coming out, the RERA, you know. Now, I think that is a very welcome move. Having said that, we again, I keep saying this, it has to be customized. You can't have a RERA which is working in Mumbai on the same lines as working in the NCR region because each each state or each area, I can't even use the word state, it can be a region itself which has to be developed or addressed or looked after whichever by a specific kind of RERA, you know, so it, it has to be state specific. You know, the problem is, I mean, it's not a problem really, it's the way the law is structured that, you know, the land is both under, you know, the central list as well as the state list and in the middle it falls into the concurrent list. So the land which is supposedly owned, the land banks are owned by the centre, but they are uh, regulated by the state because in the middle there is the concurrent list. I think there somewhere there's a dichotomy. There has to be more exchange between the state and centre and also somewhere a little unbundling, you know, distribution of powers have to be given to states. Yet on the other hand, the centre also has to step in uh, where it is required, but not control. I think that's where probably things will start sorting out. Thank you, Kiran. Uh, this is Kiran Prabhakar, uh, founding partner for PAV Law Offices. Uh, this is Dheera Jahuja from Expo TV for BowlReality.com.